Welcome to Patriots Point. I'm Wayne Adams. I'm the acting chair at Patriots Point. Uh, I'd like to introduce one of our board members, the mayor of Mount Pleasant, Will Haney, who's here with us. Um, Governor, Representative, Governor McMaster, Representative Mace, um, Senator Campson, Representative Hartnett, other officials that may be with us today. I haven't seen it's always an honor to have you here at Patriots Point. Not too long ago, we stood here as the, the governor announced his executive order to commission a study in to remediate contaminants from the ship. We completed phase one in this last fall, but we've got, we've got more to do. And I, I want to thank Governor for his leadership in this project from the get-go. I want to thank the General Assembly for the appropriation of funds. And I want to thank SCORE for the work they've done, the South Carolina Office of Resilience. Uh, they were a tremendous resource to work with. They were committed. Uh, they were collaborative. And it was a pleasure to work with them. And they did a great job. We really appreciate it. And we're looking forward to kicking off phase two this year. And along with that, I'll introduce Ben Duncan. Ben's the chief resilience officer for the state and the head of the Office of Resilience. And, and Ben, we're, Ben, I want to thank you personally for the time you and Eric and others in the office have given us the past year or so. It's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Adams. And, uh, we want to thank uh, Governor McMaster for giving us this assignment. Uh, this is a historic landmark that we want to see preserved. We want to see this project move forward. I foresee that this is going to be a great uh, ending to this. Uh, there are a lot of contaminants on this ship. We've been working hard to identify those contaminants. We have done so. And we, the, our next phase is to move to remove those contaminants on the ship. We will be meeting with the JBRC on tomorrow to get approval for this. And we expect that we will move forward very quickly afterwards with a request for proposal to do so. We've been working with a great group of individuals and, and consultants. Uh, Dr. Jackie Michelle is one of the leading consultants with RPI. She has a great group of other consultants working with her, with us to identify those contaminants. And so that we can make this a great area so there won't be any problems in the future with any hazardous waste that could be spill out. Again, we are we, we're, we're grateful to the governor for having the foresight for this project and we're getting ready to move forward as quickly as possible with the proper approvals. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Ms. Jackie Michelle, uh, Dr. Jackie Michelle, who is a consultant with RPI. She's known nationally for the work that she's done. It's a local uh, company, it's a South Carolina company, uh, which they've done work nationally. And they, they, they work with uh, OSHA. Uh, they also work with the Coast Guard with oil spills and identifying ways of cleaning those oil spills. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Jackie Michelle. Thank you so much, Ben, and thank you, Governor, to be here. You know, our team was, um, um, under phase one, was asked to sort of do an inventory and catalog of the contaminants that were on board the Yorktown. And so in that survey, you know, there are 428 tanks, structural tanks, that hold bulk liquids on the Yorktown. Um, you know, they're integral to the structure of the, of the vessel. You know, they're associated with the bulkheads and the, and the frames. And um, so, you know, we call them the structural uh, tanks. And, you know, those are, you know, the major contaminants on those were um, mostly heavy fuel oil on the uh, structural tanks. And that was the fuel oil that was used to, um, you know, power the ship when, when she was uh, operational. But there's also um, other kinds of containers that contain, you know, hydrologic oils. And we also looked at PCBs, lead paint, and asbestos as issues, contaminants on board the ship. And so when we, uh, when we finished our initial work in uh, June 2000, uh, 
23, there were about 65,000 gallons of heavy fuel oil, about 14,000 gallons of hydraulic oils in about 37 locations, 140,000 gallons of oily liquids. Then, when, when the, uh, the issue came with uh, the, what we call the next phase, which was the uh, immediate repairs when, when she started leaking in summer. So we brought in and came back on scene, brought in a team of divers who sort of patched uh, 35 breaches in the hull. And so once we were able to secure the leaking into the ship, then we could start addressing the leakage that in between the tanks, you know, inside the ship, because we're trying to maintain the integrity of the ship. You know, it's like a bathtub inside. We want to keep everything inside and not let it get outside. So we spent a lot of time dewatering certain tanks so that we could get access to find where the leakings were between the tanks. You know, there's some of these tanks have five, yeah, five six types of piping that run through them, and a lot of that piping is corroded. So the idea was to identify those places where it's leaking, patch those in a temporary manner, so then we could then dewater those tanks, get them cleaned out, and so that we could then get access to the tanks you know, below there, because a lot of the tanks you can't get to, because you know, they're stacked on top of each other. It's an amazingly complex and challenging and pretty exciting project. So a total of 47 tanks were dewatered, and we moved their contents either to other tanks or um, off-site for uh, just proper disposal. Uh, we uh, removed uh, about 600,000 gallons of oily water because, you know, originally we thought there was a limit, limited amount, but then with all the leaking, we had to sort of deal with, you know, contaminants that were now moved among the tanks during that process. And so all that was transported off-site for a proper disposal, almost 9,000 not nine, nine tons of oily waste that was in the bottom of these tanks had to be removed. And so what we tried to do was to isolate um, those tanks that are sort of adjacent to the hull and then one step in because that way gives us protection from any leaks that might occur inside that might go outside. So we've really focused on that isolation of those critical tanks. Um, let's see, then, then we, you know, we actually had to do some asbestos removal because it was in places that were cleaning, and so we had to, not just three areas for asbestos removal. So now we're getting into uh, phase two, which we're really excited about, and our approach, you know, now that we have a, you know, after doing the, both phase one and, you know, and the, and the immediate repairs, we have a really much better um, inventory of contaminants, you know, places that we couldn't have access to before. So our approach there is to, three things, remediate. So we're going to offload the, you know, the heavy fuel oils, the hydraulic oils, you know, those kind of things. Then we're going to mitigate, and that is cleaning of areas, you know, where there are spills and where there might be some public access, or where we're going to try to keep people from coming in contact. And in fact, there's very few areas that we actually have to clean in within the public uh, routes. I mean, the, the Patriot Sport has done an amazing job of keeping those areas very safe for the public. And the third um, approach is to isolate. So some places, you, they're just too big to clean. You know, we couldn't clean them effectively, so we'll just prevent public access to those areas. Um, and then also, the, some of the places with the, um, the flaking lead paint that we can't mitigate, like the foxhole, you know, we're just going to isolate that area and people get, get there. So again, it's remediate, mitigate, and isolate. That's the strategy for phase two. Thank you. Good morning, friends. My name is Robert Boyles. Uh, I'm privileged to serve as the director of the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. Welcome you to Mount Pleasant. Um, Mr. Adams, thank you for having us. And Ms. Hunt, thank you for, for having us here. Folks, it's a beautiful spring day. It is the first day of spring, believe it or not. And I'm here to remind you that on this first day of spring, South Carolina is a special place. And South Carolina's coast is indeed a magical place. It's a place full of life from people enjoying the great outdoors, from boating, fishing, hunting, and bird watching. And the wildlife that makes this place special is one of the prime reasons that Charleston is a top tourism destination in the world. I'll say that again. Charleston is a global destination for people coming to enjoy the outdoors here in South Carolina. Today, approximately 1.5 million people live on our coastline, approximately 735 of which, 735,000 live here in the greater Charleston area. And I believe, I would submit to you, these people come here to live, to work, to play, and to raise a family, mainly because of the outdoor opportunities that our great community has to offer. You can rise with the sun and surf from the beach. 
and you can end the day watching the sun set over the Ravenel Bridge and historic Charleston with a kayak tour around Crab Bank. It's a special place. And today is noteworthy because we are gathering to remind everyone of how special it is, how special a place this is, and as I like to say, conservation and stewardship is a team sport. It's a team sport. This is a sample of materials that have been taken from the bilge and the tanks of the Fighting Lady, the USS Yorktown. It's nice and pretty when it's contained. It's a lot easier to deal with when it's contained as it is now. In 1999, we saw what could occur from impacts of pollutants such as this when the MV Star Aviva had an accidental release of 24,000 gallons of fuel oil in the Atlantic Ocean off of Cape Romaine National Wildlife Refuge, the north end of Charleston County. That spill impacted thousands of coastal birds and affected a lot of outdoor recreation for a lot of people and affected our commercial seafood industry as well. Again, in 2012, we saw the impacts of pollutants on our wildlife salt marshes and people when recreational shell fishing had to be closed due to a release from the motor vessel Everreach, the MV Everreach, which spilled approximately 12,500 gallons of oil into the Cooper River. Folks, there's a lot of this stuff that remains on the Yorktown. Take a good look. And take a good look. The impacts of these pollutants are known and they're sometimes very, very long lasting. But today we gather at halftime between phase one and phase two of this remediation project to remind folks of the importance of our natural resources and how it, important it is that we have an orderly removal of the pollutants that remain aboard the Fighting Lady, the USS Yorktown. We thank Governor McMaster Congresswoman Mace, the members of the General Assembly, and our community leaders as well for reminding us of what it is that makes this place such a special place to live and work and play and raise a family. The Fighting Lady has welcomed tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of visitors including scouts from my own scout troop when I was raising my children here in Mount Pleasant. And the Fighting Lady reminds us of concepts that are critical today. Duty, honor, country, courage. What we don't want to remember the Yorktown for in the case of an accidental release of these pollutants what we do not want to know the Yorktown for is dirty, harmful cleanup. So here we are at halftime, a successful completion of phase one and looking forward to the second half of phase two. And we thank the leadership of Governor McMaster for his vision, for his commitment to ensuring that these resources remain enjoyable for us today, but also here for tomorrow. So it is with that my distinct honor and privilege to introduce a man who is as curious about our state's and our nation's past as he is bullish on the future, our governor, Henry McMaster. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. I want to welcome, thank you, Robert, for that nice introduction. I want to welcome all of you here to this beautiful place and say I'm happy to be here myself. Uh, this, this, is a, this is a gorgeous place full of history. Our environmental assets, our people, all of beyond compare, and that's why South Carolina is growing, and that is why I think the most recent magazine evaluation um, town and travel or something like that said that uh, the city of Charleston is the number one city to visit in America. And over and over many times it's been by Condé Nast and some of those others have been 
labeled the number one city in the world to visit. Uh, so that's just one aspect that, that others see about us. But uh, this, this asset that we have here is, is phenomenal, and we have to take, ha take care of it. Um, the Yorktown, the history is really something. It, it, uh, was, this is not the original Yorktown. That one, that one sunk. And then this one was built and was renamed the Yorktown. And it served in the Pacific. I think they had 11 or so battles it, it participated in there. And ended up here in 1975. Some far-thinking people brought it down. It's been an enormous traction and reminder of our history ever since. Uh, but it uh, is going to leak. We know that. It already has leaked some and it has, has been mentioned. But when the ship got here, it, it had not been cleaned out. It was just brought down and, and put there, and there it is. And uh, they say even the ashtrays still had cigarette butts and things in them. That's how much remediation was done. Before it was brought in, which was zero, the government said, here it is, and there it is, and it's still ours. So we have to take care of it. Uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of in interest in the, uh, our environmental and cultural heritage and resilience and those sort of things was reflected in something uh, called the Floodwater Commission a few years ago. And I think interest has peaked more and more as we understand the importance of nature, the importance of our environment and all that we have, which is precious and is unique. The Patriots Point Authority did a study back in 2013 that discovered and categorized a lot of this stuff and there's 1.6 million gallons of this and other kind of things. Well, uh, because of a variety of, of reasons, some understood and some not, uh, not much was done since then. And then in 2022, uh, I asked, uh, I issued an executive order directing the Office of Resilience, which hadn't been created with, with Ben Duncan, to do a commission, uh, an update and a cost study and to, to get moving. So they did. And in August 2023, they received uh, approval from the Joint Bond Review Committee to go ahead and start spending money to get the work done, and that was 10 point something, about $10.7 million. And that was completed in 2023, and what was found there has already been mentioned. And as Director Ball says, we're now at halftime, but we certainly can't quit. We're actually late coming to this game. This should have been done a long time ago. This ship's been here since 1975. But I promise you this, we don't have another minute to waste because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know when the next storm's going to happen. We don't know what might happen. And we, if the, the, it is unimaginable to the damage that would be done to our prosperity, to these beautiful beaches from Mount Pleasant to Sullivan's to Isle of Palms to, to Kiowa to Folly Beach, everything in between, including the port, the fish, the birds, the wildlife, walking on the beach. You'd have to wear boots, I guess, to walk on the beach to keep the stuff from getting you. We just can't let that happen. So we, we, are, we are determined that this is going to be finished, going to be finished on time so that this area can continue to prosper. So I want to thank all these people that have been involved in this. This is a... No one or two people can can be the, the, the prime movers in all of these things. This, these people you see here have been deeply involved, and that's what it takes to get something like this done. So I appreciate your interest very much. I appreciate all your, your interest in this beautiful state. There's not another place in the whole world that's, uh, that can touch us, and that's why people are coming from all over the world to invest hundreds of millions and billions of dollars in this place that, uh, that we, we call home. And I remind you, I have a have an etching on, uh, on the wall given to me by the Department of Archives from 1739 uh, where it is reported by, back to the king that this place that we're looking at right now from right here where we are standing says that the city of Charleston in Carolina is the most beautiful, prosperous, lush place in all of his majesty's areas in the new world. And it's our home. And keeping this ship and this place, Patriots Point, booming for the rest of the state is our job, our duty, and we will get it done. So I thank you. Congresswoman Mace.
Uh, thank you and good morning. I will be quick this morning. I have a flight to catch and I don't want to miss getting to that awful place called D.C. today. Uh, I want to thank Governor McMaster. I thank Mr. Adams. I want to thank Ben Duncan for being here today, uh, Representative uh, Hartnett, Senator Campson, um, and uh, everyone this morning. As the governor has said, uh, Charleston is a beautiful place. I want to thank the mayor, too. Hey, Mayor Haney, for being here this morning here in Mount Pleasant. The Yorktown, the USS Yorktown, has been here for about 50 years, as the governor said. The USS Yorktown town for the town of Mount Pleasant. The low country overall represents bravery. The USS Yorktown represents valor. The USS Yorktown represents public service. And we want to keep every part of it uh, intact and ensure that we're also protecting the environment. I want to thank Governor McMaster this morning for creating South Carolina's Office of Resiliency. Without that, we uh, wouldn't be doing as good of a job protecting our environment, our wildlife, our habitats, our ecosystem and environment uh, and everything else as good as we are today. And just as conservative as Henry McMaster is, you can't say conservation without saying conservative, but he believes in conservation. He believes in the industry in Charleston and Mount Pleasant and tourism and believes in protecting um, all of our environment. And as he has said in his State of the State addresses in the past, that South Carolina's coasts are lined with gold because they are so pristine, they are so clean, they are so beautiful. And one of the reasons people come down here is because of the clean water, because of our beautiful oak trees, the Spanish moss, the palmetto trees, etc. And we want to keep it that way. And at the federal level, I want to do it. I want to admit today that we often argue over the amount of money we're going to spend. We argue about how it will be appropriated. We argue about how it's going to be spent. Um, but at the end of the day, when those funds are appropriated, it is our job to make sure that we get every asset, every resource that we can for the state of South Carolina. And I want to thank the governor for being a good partner, being a good steward. We frequently work with the governor and all of our state and local leaders, and will continue to do so. In and in that vein, I want folks in the low country to remember that over the last three years since I was sworn into office, our office, we have been able to secure or authorize or get appropriated over $500 million for the low country. A lot of that is in stormwater projects, flooding projects, wastewater infrastructure, environmental projects, other infrastructure, et cetera. We're working really hard. And when you call us and you're looking for resources, grant funding, those sorts of things, we will get you your letters of support within 24 hours. That is our goal as an office, and we've done a very successful job of that. And so I want I want to continue uh, to express my gratitude for the local leaders here today and that our office is here to support you, support the low country, and support the state of South Carolina. Thank you all, and have a great morning. Thank you, Governor. Okay, I'm Senator Chip Campson. Uh, this is in my Senate District. Um, I have a long relationship with Patriots Point. Um, used to operate the boats you're seeing right there um, until just last year. And my father was on the first Patriots Point Development Authority Board. Um, this event and what we're about to do with the Yorktown in uh, remediating potential oil spills and pollution, and also preserving history, brings to mind a quote by Thomas Saulhill. Thomas Saulhill was the president of the Nature Conservancy, also the president of NYU University. And he said this, he said, a society defines itself not only by what it creates, but also by what it refuses to destroy. And in this instance, what we are doing is we are refusing to destroy or to allow Mother Nature to destroy a very important historic asset. Um, the Yorktown, the original Yorktown was sunk at the Battle of Midway. This boat was, this ship was in the yard. It was actually a heavy cruiser. It was scheduled to be a heavy cruiser, converted it to a carrier, fooled the Japanese into thinking that they did not sink the first Yorktown. The history is incredible. Um, but also what we're refusing to destroy, not just the history, we're refusing to destroy the wonderful ecosystem and estuary that Charleston Harbor is. It is the most 
beautiful natural harbor on the entire east coast of this nation. And so the history that the Patriots Point Development Authority communicates, preserves, interprets for the visitors here, and it is the largest or second to largest, it goes back and forth, tourist attraction in, in Charleston, the number one tourist destination in the world. That's a very important thing to protect and preserve. And with, if it weren't for the Yorktown, uh, Patriots Point would just be a mere shell of what it is. So we're protecting and preserving economic opportunity for the, for the citizens and the people of, of uh, Charleston County and for visitors who come here. Uh, but perhaps even more importantly, we're preventing a, what would be a catastrophic econo uh, e ecological um, tr um, tragedy if we didn't do this remediation. So I applaud the governor for his executive order. Uh, I applaud Ben Duncan for his leadership in helping to make this happen. Um, and I applaud the Patriots Point Development Board for initiating this process and participating as well. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, Governor McMaster, thank you for being here this morning and thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak. My name is Tom Hartnett. I'm the State House Representative for District 110 in which the Yorktown resides. As many of y'all know, the, the Yorktown is one of the largest draws in our area, drawing over 300,000 uh, visitors each year. Uh, the ship was decommissioned by the Navy in 1970, was given to, Char to the state of South Carolina in 1975, it was made a historic landmark in 1986. As y'all have learned today, it was a gift that appears to keep on giving to us. Now it is our problem and thanks to the governor and his initiatives we'll be able to clean it up. Uh, there are currently about 1.25 million gallons of impacted waters that will need to be removed and remediated on the ship. The continued corrosion of the outer hull of the vessel um, will inevitably lead to a deterioration and failure in these inner tanks. As you all learned earlier, they've tried to get the wing tanks out, now it's the inner tanks we're trying to protect. With the deterioration of these inner tanks, it causes, could cause potential leaking of hazardous materials into our harbor. This, these hazardous materials leaking out would impair commercial shipping, they would impair commercial recreational boating. They would damage our harbor's ecosystem. They would damage including our, inclu the ecosystem, including our nearby rivers, creeks, beaches, and marshes. This would be an environmental and an economic disaster for our area, for the low country, and for the state. As the representative of this, state, of this district, 110, in which New York Town resides, I'm proud to support this vital project with the governor, and I look forward to seeing its completion. Thank you very much. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Anybody have a question for anyone? Yes, sir. Ben Duncan, come forward, please. We started off with about 40 million. We spent 10 something. Right. Go ahead. Eddie. The estimated cost for phase two is about 18 million dollars. Next question. Ben, is it 10.8? It's, it's, it's almost $10 million has been spent so far. It's a little over $8 million, but we have reserved about $10 million for that first phase. Yes, sir. Hold, hold Stay up. <laughs> <laughs> Any more? They had a study in 2013. There's been a lot of interest. We didn't have the office on resilience. There's always a question of money and funding and those kind of things, but we are, uh, we, we're in high gear now. More? Everybody cool? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.